Hi everyone, Paul Bertarelli reporting for AvWeb. Here at Pipistrel's factory in Adoshina, Slovenia, they don't have a lot of room, so to make the most of it, airplanes are hung from the hangar ceiling. They also do a lot of de-winging, and one that's getting its wings reinstalled is this new Alpha Electro pure electric aircraft. If it's not the first practical electric airplane, it's the first one we've been invited to fly. Here's Pipistrel's Tina Tomasic. So uh, the Alpha Electro here in the background uh, is actually a product that features two major innovations. One is the prop mill, uh, which is a special propeller shape that is able to be effective both in the thrust regime and in the regen mode. Uh, but the second, perhaps more important, is how the battery architecture is done. Uh, in fact, we have both a quick replace and a quick charge system that is connected to our proprietary BMS. So in the plane there is six enclosures which can be pulled in and out uh, like a set of drawers, uh, literally making the aeroplane and ready to fly again in a matter of minutes, two to five minutes is all you need, or they can be recharged in uh, between 45 minutes and one hour. Uh, the BMS stands for Battery Management System and it monitors every single cell uh, in the system. So there is upwards of 600 battery cells in the Alpha Electro and uh, every tenth of a second we know exactly what uh, their voltage is, what the current and what the temperature. So using this set of data we do not only provide the pilot with a set of uh, readable and useful information that he can um, utilize in order to maintain safe flight and also plan the progress of the flight, but we also track the performance of the battery and we are uh, able to anticipate a battery malfunction. So our BMS uh, technology is not about detecting failure, it's about anticipating, forecasting a failure. So um, there is uh, two levels of protections. Uh, because in the Alpha Electro we maintain control over the complete powertrain, uh, there's a set of warnings, of course, like uh, it's normal in aviation. The second layer of protection is actually power derating. So uh, the system would reduce power on the system while uh, keeping the pilot in the loop, uh, actually notifying the pilot about um, notifying the pilot about uh, power being lowered and the third set of reactions is actually associated with the battery disconnect so a set of contactors would disconnect a portion of the battery or the complete battery enable to protect it uh, from um, a complete failure. Professor Gregor Weble, who designed the propeller, calls it a prop mill, uh, reflecting its uh, dual logic or uh, duality of the design. So it behaves like a propeller during its thrust regime, so when you add power it still provides thrust, but uh, when you are essentially idling down on the approach it functions exactly as a windmill would, uh, being efficient both on the thrust and the windmilling side. Uh, the pilot would not notice any shocks or any change in behavior, um, he would only notice um, an increase rate of descent uh, because uh, while the propeller is uh, burning energy so to say uh, converting it into battery charge uh, it is also uh, reducing the overall energy state of the plane making it sink more you've heard from tina about some of the technical specifics of this airplane the alpha trainer uh, electro which we're in now i'm with nate a uh, couple things you're probably going to notice uh, some rolling shutter with the camera. There's a couple reasons for that. One is that it's still an airplane, so we still have a pulsating uh, prop blast over the windshield, and that's shaking the windshield a little bit. It's also quite bumpy here because we've got a buria wind coming in, so it's going to be a little bouncy. Uh, Nate, we're starting off with 100% yep. of uh, battery, and I'll show you some B-roll of the uh, battery monitor system here in the uh, uh, instrument monitoring system. So we're basically doing the run-up here, which there isn't a run-up, so the, the system is all green, we're ready to go. Absolutely, everything is on the green, we have 100% uh, of batteries, so we are taking the power. And 3, 2, 1, now we can go. So uh, we're climbing at uh, 700 feet a minute, and uh, that is about 49 kilowatts, and now we're going to bring the power back. We already did. Yeah. Okay. And the takeoff, what did we have? We had about 70? 65. 65. 65 kilowatts for takeoff. Now the sound, uh, you probably doesn't come through the uh, audio very well, but the sound is not that different from the piston airplane. If you didn't know it was electric, you probably wouldn't be able to tell. And again, that's from the prop noise. Uh, it still has a prop on it, and we still are subject to the uh, slipstream effect.
If we compare with Rotex, just less vibration, it's working more smoother. By design, the Alpha Electro is no different to fly than the gasoline version, with one exception. It has short legs, about an hour or so of endurance, so the Electro is designed to remain in the pattern as a landing trainer. Like the gasoline model, it has a brisk climb rate, easily a thousand feet per minute initial, and gets to pattern altitude quickly. That's a good thing, because during all phases of flight, you really need to keep an eye on the remaining battery capacity which is easily done via this large power monitor. That vertical bar in the center of the display shows battery remaining, and the round gauge in the upper right shows actual power level selected. On final, with the throttle at zero thrust, the Electro's prop mill will drive the motor and recuperate or regenerate between two and five kilowatts until power is commanded again to climb or go around. On the day we flew, it was gusty and bumpy, and that requires a little bit more power. I did say that from inside the airplane, the noise level is not that much different than a gasoline model. However, outside the airplane, it's another matter entirely. After our flight, Nate did some low-altitude, high-power passes, and although there's wind noise over the mic, you can sense how quiet the airplane is. Flight schools in Europe, where the Electro is generating a lot of interest, will like that a lot. Charging is done with this purpose-made charger through a plug in the belly of the airplane. It requires between 45 minutes and 2 hours depending on the battery state. Our flight required about 2 euro worth of electricity or about $2.25. You can find a full report on the Pipistrol Electro in the August 2015 issue of Aviation Consumer Magazine. I'm Paul Bertarelli reporting. Thanks for watching.